Hello and welcome to this section of the Circuit Analysis Tutor. Uh, in this section we're going to start to talk about what we call source transformations. Source transformations. Basically what this, uh, this lesson and the next several, several lessons are all going to be giving you additional tools in your tool bag to look at a circuit and simplify it, basically. So reviewing what we've done so far, we've learned about the general concepts of series and uh, parallel resistance and voltage and current sources and all of that. We've learned how to uh, use the node voltage and the mesh current uh, uh, methods to simplify a circuit and solve for the branch currents and the node voltages and everything everywhere. And we've learned how to take series and parallel resistors and kind of simplify them, right, to, in order to uh, simplify the circuit to solve it as well. So if you think about that, we've learned how to take these parallel resistors and sort of use some math to change those parallel resistors into a single resistor. We've learned that we can add series resistances together to kind of simplify that as well into one resistor that's the sum of, of those uh, uh, resistors that are in series. So those are examples of sort of transformations really in a, in a big picture sense. You look at some resistors, you see the pattern, either they're parallel or, resist or, or series, and sometimes you can simplify them into a simpler network. That's what we've done a lot before, right? And we've also done node voltage and mesh current on top of that. Here we're just learning how to do simplifications of the sources, source transformations. And what I mean by the source is the voltage sources or the current sources. So a lot of times when you look at a circuit, there'll be a lot of stuff in the circuit that's getting the work done, but then over on one side will be the source. It'll be a current source or a voltage source, or it could be a combination of current sources or a combination of voltage sources. These source transformations are just another tool to help you simplify that part of the network to get to the answer. So it's not like it's better or worse than anything we've done before. It's not like you know, necessarily you know, superior. It's just sometimes it's useful to be able to use source transformations. So kind of keep that in the back of your mind. Also, a lot of you guys, you know, when you're taking these classes, uh, you've probably heard or at least read in your book that we're going to get to something called the Thevenin equivalent circuit and the Norton equivalent circuit. It sounds really complicated, but what we're doing in this section is we're laying the groundwork for Thevenin and Norton equivalent circuits. So basically that's what I was saying, at least the next six or six or eight sections from now are all talking about source transformations. A Thevenin equivalent transformation, a Norton equivalent transformation, those are just specific names and we're building the groundwork for those here. So let's begin to talk about source transformations. Let's write on the board one of the simplest you know, little circuits or the simplest little drawings I can to illustrate this. So here's your source, all right, and let's go ahead and say that we have a resistor in series with this source with a resistance R, all right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to label terminals A and B because what you're doing with source transformations is you kind of have to look at part of the circuit that involves the source. So connected to terminals A and B is a bunch of other stuff. All kinds of stuff could be over here. But the fact of the matter is, almost always you have a source and some kind of source resistance or some kind of resistance on the front end of the circuit. Um, this could even be the battery resistance. You know, these little batteries you have, they have resistance too. Um, or this could be an external resistor in your circuit or whatever. But in any case, it's very common to have a voltage source in series with some kind of resistance. And then this whole thing is just connected to whatever you're trying to do, you know, transistors or motors or lights or whatever. This is what we call the source, right? Now it turns out that there's a theorem out there, the source transformation, that shows you and, and sort of proves to you that you can rewrite any voltage source that's in series with a resistor and transform it into something uh, that's equivalent. That's why it's called source transformation. And let me show you what that would look like. Uh, what you're going to have, you can take any voltage source that's connected to a resistor like this, right? You can take anything that you see like this and you can rewrite it as follows. And you know, I want to go ahead and change colors just to kind of mix it up a little bit. You can change this voltage source into a current source. Remember, this is the symbol for current source. I'm gonna call it I sub S, current source, right? Now, instead of this resistor R being in series, you can put that same resistor R in parallel with the source. Now we still have to have our terminals A and B, 
So let me go ahead and draw these terminals off uh, in parallel with this whole arrangement here. All right. In a nutshell, ladies and gentlemen, this is a source transformation. This is what this section is about. So we're going to do lots of problems that show you how this is useful and all that. But the bottom line is that anytime you have a voltage source in series with a resistance R, you can always, 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 always rewrite it like this. You can take that resistance R. Notice I use the same letter. So if this were a 10 ohm resistor, 10 ohm resistor would go here in parallel. If this were a 79.5 ohm resistor, a 79.5 ohm, uh, ohm resistor would have to go here. So whatever resistance you have in series with your voltage source, you just take it and put it in parallel with some kind of current source. Now what value current source do you need to make this guy true, to make these guys equivalent? Well that's, that's a little bit of math involved, I mean it's very simple math, but this is how you do it. The current source, I sub s, which is what we've transformed to down here, is equal to V sub s, the original voltage source, over this resistance in uh, series there, which is the same resistance that we have in parallel here. So this is an important relation. This ties it all together. I mean, basically, if you have this arrangement here, you just take the resistor, stick it in parallel with the current source. The value of this current source is equal to V over R. That's just Ohm's law. I is equal to V over R, right? So these things, I'll show you in a second why it's true. I know a lot of you are reading it and looking at this and you're like, okay, I believe him, but I don't really understand why it's true. But you just have to kind of trust me for a second. We'll get to a little bit of a proof to show you in just a moment. But basically, from the point of view of terminals A and B, that's very important. From the point of view of terminals A and B, everything from here on behaves exactly the same in these two circuits. You can kind of imagine like a little box, you know, a little black box drawn around here that you can't really see inside. Two terminals popping out the other end of it, terminals A and terminal B, right? From the outside, you will not be able to tell the difference between these two circuits. Inside that box, right, this hypothetical box, I have terminals A and B coming out, inside that box I could have a current source in parallel with a resistance, right? and I'll be able to measure everything I can at terminals A and B and try to you know, see what properties it has. I could have this arrangement inside, or I could have a voltage source in series with a resistance, and you will not be able to tell the difference by looking from the outside of the box. That's what a source transformation is. If I have a circuit over here, a big complicated network, it could be an entire computer, it doesn't, doesn't matter, right? And feeding the whole thing is this arrangement here, I can take this out and stick this current source in parallel with the resistance in and everything behaves the same because they are equivalent to one another. So it's kind of like algebra. Sometimes an equation might look different than another equation or fractions may look different, you know, like, you know, six twelfths, same as one half. They look different, but they're the same thing. So that's what's going on here. So let's take a little second um, to, and let me just write a little note here. R is the same. R is the same between the two circuits. And by the way, I should say that this arrow here that I've drawn here, it goes both ways. If I start with a circuit that has a current source in parallel with the resistance, I can transform and get to this arrangement. I can transform back and forth. It's a double-edged arrow. All right. So, let's take a moment to see if I can convince you that this is true. I think you kind of believe me, um, but let's take a second to try to do more than just believe. Let's see if we can really understand it. So, what I want to do is draw like a little aside here. This is sort of an aside box, and we're going to reference these two drawings. Let me ask you a question. If I had this box, and I cannot see inside, two terminals, A and B coming out, how would I try to, to determine the properties? of what's inside that box. Or let's say I had two boxes. That's a better example. Let's say I have one box with A and B come out and inside is this arrangement. And let's say I have an, a second box that has this arrangement inside and A and B are popping out of that. So I have two boxes, two sets of terminals A and B, different arrangements inside, but of course, according to this, we're saying that they behave the same way, okay? How could I test to see if they behave the same way? What would be a good test? Well, the best test that I can come up with it, what we're basically saying is no matter what we connect across terminals A and B, those boxes have to behave the same. So if I just take the extremes, I should be able to measure what's going to happen if I put different loads on the outside of terminals A and B, and I should be able to measure the response. The easiest loads to measure 
The first load to measure that would be easy is to put a short circuit across terminals A and B here and across terminals A and B here. And then when you do that, you should get your meter out and measure the current flowing through the load, in this case short circuit, in both cases. And then you should also measure the voltage across terminals A and B when you short circuit it like that. And, and they should all match, right? And the other thing is, so that's with a short circuit. I should be able to take the short circuit away and create an open circuit, which is what I have here. This is an open circuit across the load here. And again, measure the current and the voltage at terminals A and B. So what I'm basically saying is no matter what load I connect to terminals A and B, it doesn't matter. I'm going to measure the same voltage across the load and the same current through the load. So I'm just going to take the two extremes that I know of. I mean, I could put any resistor I want there, but I'm going to choose to put zero ohms, which is a short circuit, and then I'll measure the current and voltage through the load, which is a short circuit, and then I'll take it away and I'll do the same thing with an open circuit. And in both cases, at both extremes, infinity ohms and zero ohms, I should get exactly the same behavior. So let's do a little thought experiment and see if that's true. So let's go and let's say, first, let's look at the, I think a little easier case, Let's look at the case of a short circuit. What this means is I put a piece of wire with zero ohms uh, resistance across terminals A and B in both cases, and what do you think I'm going to measure? All right, well, if I put a short circuit here, then literally there's a wire connecting A and B. So what would be the current through that wire? Let's call that I load because the load in this case is whatever you connect through here, so it's just a wire. What would be the current through this wire? It's a very simple circuit, it's just a wire here. So I, the current through here, would be V over R. I is equal to V over R, that is just Ohm's law, right? So it's gonna be Vs over R. What am I going to have for the voltage across this short circuit here, right here? Now if you think about it, any short circuit, you should remember from our earlier discussions, anytime you have a short circuit, if I'm measuring the voltage across A and B, which is across just a piece of wire, the voltage is going to be zero. If there's no uh, resistance, there can be no voltage drop across it by definition. So the voltage load is just going to be equal to a big fat zero. All right, so this is applying to the first circuit, right? So let me just make this, this part absolutely clear. Let's call this, just to make it clear, cir circuit A and circuit B. So I'm gonna label this circuit A, all right? So across circuit A, for a short circuit, I have a load of this and a, uh, a load current of that and a load voltage of that, all right? Now let's do the same exact thing with circuit B. So I'll circle that. So let's go look at circle B and I'll change colors here. All right, this is circuit B here. What happens if I put a short circuit, because we're talking about short circuits here? Short circuit across there. So I have a wire here. So the current from the source, which is a constant current source, it comes through and it hits this resistance junction here, but it has two choices. It can go through a completely zero resistance, or it can go through some resistance R, which is bigger than zero. Well, in this case, I mean, you can, you can think about it any way you want, but all of this current, every single amp of this current is going to flow through this resistance, this uh, short circuit here, because it has no resistance at all. So in this case, I load, what's it going to equal to? It's going to equal to whatever the, the source current is, I sub S. All right? And what would the voltage across this uh, guy be? If I have a wire here and the current's flowing through, it doesn't matter how many amps, if it's just a current with no resistance, the load voltage has to be zero. All right, so step back and look at what we've shown here. We've done a hypothetical situation. We put a short circuit here and we put a short circuit here. In this case, we get a load current through the short circuit of V over R, Vs over R. Notice we've defined Vs over R to be I sub S. So this current that's flowing through here is the same as the current flowing in the second circuit that we've just shown here. So the current flowing through the short circuit's the same and the load voltage is the same. So what we have shown is that in both cases, the way we defined, it's all because of the way we defined what IS needs to be, the, the source transformed, uh, or the source transformation current uh, source. The way we've defined it, if we put a short circuit across it, we're going to get the same current between the terminals and the same voltage across the terminals. Now let's do exactly the same thing quickly for an open circuit. 
okay, for an open circuit. So for, for uh, circuit A, this guy right here, for an open circuit, this is what we have. Now this is exactly the way I have drawn it because this is the terminals. I open circuit means I open everything up. It's exactly the way it's drawn here. What is the current, the load current going between A and B? Ask yourself that. Well, the current between A and B when I have an open circuit is zero. So you just write I load is zero. And what is the voltage across here with an open circuit? Well, if you think about it, there's no current flowing anywhere. So there's no voltage drop across this resistance. So the voltage you measure here is just the same voltage that you started with, so, so Vs. So V load is V sub S. It's just the source, uh, it's the source voltage because there's no current flowing, so there's no drop here. So the voltage you measure here is just what you get here. And I think you can kind of see the pattern here for circuit B. What is going to happen here? With an open circuit, there's no current flowing from here to here, but look what's really happening. You have a current source, the current's coming up, it's hitting the resistor, it is flowing in a loop like this. So even with a no load here, there is current circulating in this loop here because this is always on and I have a closed path. But that's not what I care about through here. I care about what is the load current through here. And there is no current here because it's an open circuit. So let me make sure and match my colors here. I load is again zero. And what is the voltage across here? What is the voltage across here? Well, you're looking back this way. The current's going, you're going to get a voltage drop through here, right? A voltage drop through here. So since the current going through this resistor is just I sub S, the voltage load is just going to equal I times R, I sub S times R. So I sub S times R. And if you look back to our original relation, I sub S times R, that's just V sub S. Okay, because of our original relation. So what we have shown in the open circuit case is that everything matches. So make sure this soaks in. Just make sure you really understand it because a lot of times when we get into doing these problems and when you get to do your Thevenin and your Norton equivalent circuits, which are just little special cases, but they're basically the same thing almost as what we're doing, what you're going to be doing is looking back through from terminals A and B and you're going to be trying to see how the circuit behaves. And what we've basically shown here is that these guys are equivalent because no matter what load I connect across A and B, the circuit behaves the same. If I put a short circuit across, the load current through it is, is equal to this, which is just I sub S, which is exactly the same thing in circuit B. That's the, the current flowing through a short circuit. The voltage across that short circuit load is zero in both cases. If I take it away and make an open circuit, then the current flowing through that open circuit is zero in both cases, and the voltage across that guy is V sub S in both cases. So it's all critical that you define everything here. So, you know, it's very, very simple. I mean, this is not calculus here. This is just algebra. You take your resistance, you stick it in parallel with the current source. The value of this current source is V sub S over R. If you're going the other way, if you're starting with this, you do the exact reverse. You take resistance, you stick it in series with a voltage source. The value of this new voltage source that you have to have to make it equivalent, you just follow the same relation. V is I sub S, which is what you would have started with times R. So you just follow Ohm's law to kind of transform them back and forth. All right. Now I want to show you a couple quick things before I close this sort of introductory section off. Let me draw a little line here. A couple things that you might not have kind of realized right away. So these are the basic transformations. Now let me show you something. I'll just put a little also. Because a lot of times you'll see circuits more complicated than what we have here. If you have something like this, with a resistance here, and you have a resistance here, and this is A and B, all right? You see what we have here? We have exactly the same thing here that we started with in this circuit here. We have a voltage source, we have a resistance here, we have terminals A and B. The only thing is we have this ugly resistor in the way. It's kind of sitting in between everything. You know, what, what this is basically saying is that this resistance here, you know, this, this R is the one you care about. When you have a voltage source, you care about the resistance that is in series with that source. You don't care about anything else in the middle here. So this does not matter at all, basically. So whenever you transform it, 
when you transform something like this, it basically works the same way. You take it as, this is V sub S, you just ignore the other one. And this is terminal A and this is terminal B. So this resistance here, this is what you focus on. You don't care about this in the middle because when you think about it, this resistance here, it's sitting in parallel with the voltage source, right? So the voltage across this source is the same as the voltage across this resistor. So really, it's just the voltage here in series with the source is what you care about. So I'm, I'm not saying it's not important to know that there's a resistor here. I'm just saying from the point of view of source transformations, when looking back through terminal A and B, and you're trying to take this and transform it into a current source in, in parallel with a resistance, you don't really need to worry about this, this resistor here. The resistor here that's in between the source and the resistance, it doesn't matter. You just kind of remove it and pretend it's not there, and you just kind of work with the circuit. Now let me show you equivalently the same kind of thing happens in the other case if you're going backwards. If you start with a current source, right, so I sub S, and you have a resistance here, normally we care, normally we talk about something like this. This is a current source in parallel with a resistance R, and we transform that, we can transform that back into a voltage source. What if you had a resistor here? in the way, so to speak. Another resistor, you know, 10 ohms or something like that. What this is basically telling you, I'm just trying to tell you, you'll see it in your book also, this resistance here, it doesn't really matter. So this resistance, you can kind of ignore the one that's in the way, and this resistance here, you can kind of ignore. Those are sort of in the way. So from the point of view of sort of thinking about how to do the source transformation, the only thing you really care about is this resistance here that's in parallel with the source, A, B, I sub S. So whenever you're trying to transform something like this to a voltage source, you know, in series with some resistance, you just take this resistance and, and sort of work your magic here and you can ignore this one. The reason you can ignore this resistor, it's not magic, it's because this current is flowing through the resistor. It doesn't matter what the voltage drop is across it, the current here, all every single amp of current is making its way to this junction point. So from the point of view of the circuit, there's still the same amount of current entering here and entering here as there is without this resistor here. Same thing here. The same amount of voltage exists right across this resistor, you know, at, the, at this node here. The same voltage is here as it is if you take it away because they're in parallel here. So the bottom line is when you have these special arrangements, if you have a resistor sort of in the way of your sort of ideal arrangement that we illustrated before, then you can just ignore it and we'll work some problems to show you that. So that's really all I want to say in this section. We did a lot of talking, you know, but every time you learn a new topic, you have to front load the conversation with a little bit of talking. I mean, I very easily could have just told you, hey, here is an arrangement, here's another arrangement, these guys are the same, use this relation, bam, let's work some problems. That's fine. But I think, you know, at some point, you have to roll your sleeves up and understand why it's the way it is. So that when you're working your problems and you're solving things and you're kind of getting the hang of it, that you're not sort of um, just, just going along blindly. You at least know where things come from. Same way we did node voltage and mesh current. We talked in detail in the beginning and then we did lots of problems. So the bottom line here is you're going to run into these arrangements a lot for sources in a circuit. You're going to have voltages in series with a resistance. You're going to have current sources in parallel with a resistance. You can switch back and forth between the two by just taking the resistance, sticking it in the appropriate location, and calculating the value of the new source according to basically Ohm's law. And we've shown that if these guys were encased in black boxes with terminals coming out, if we put a short circuit or an open circuit across those terminals and measure what's happening, the current and the voltage going through in both cases, then we're going to get the same results. So we cannot tell the difference between these two sources. That's the bottom line. And I can put any resistance in between. I could put 100,000 ohms, a million ohms. I could put capacitors out there. We haven't talked about capacitors yet, but you'll find out later. We can put capacitors there, inductors there. It doesn't matter. It's all equivalent. So a lot of times when you'll get to a circuit, it will be advantageous for you to simplify it by going into a current source or going into a voltage source um, depending on the problem that you have. And the last thing we covered is that as we work these problems, you're going to be looking for patterns. You know, you're going to be looking for patterns a lot. You're going to be trying to find out 
Okay, do I have a voltage source in series with a resistance? Okay, I can transform that to a current source. You're going to be looking for those, those, those drawings, those, those features in, in your circuits, right? What I'm trying to save you some heartburn here is that even if you have a voltage source in series with a resistance, if there's a resistor in the way, you can ignore it. You can completely ignore that, that, pretend it's not even there. Treat it as if it were not there when you're calculating your current source. And we'll do a couple of problems to show you that. Same thing's true. If you start with a current source and you have your resistor in parallel and you have this nasty old resistor in the way, a lot of students freak out and say, well, I, this doesn't match. I don't know what to do. But you just ignore it. And I tried to give you the reason why. You'll definitely see this in problems. I mean, it's very, very common to stick something in the way and see how you react. So what we're going to do now is close down this section, follow me on to the next section, we'll start working our problems with source transformation and show you how you can use these uh, methods to simplify your circuits. And You just need to think of it as another tool in your bag, just like series and parallel resistors, you can simplify those. This is another way to simplify sources along the way to get uh, to the answer in the sort of the least uh, resistance possible.